Hello and welcome to week 5, module 5, and it's all about teams, team performance, dynamics, and behaviors. Activities this week and the discussion is around generational differences. Work with your group and the impact of performance management on teams. We will cover how to pro take proactive measures for performance success um, that will strengthen and your understanding of the team and the effectiveness of the team. Let's start with the highlighting of key concepts from Chapter 11 from Performance Management by Aguinas and some ways we um, and some ways of creating team accountability respect and inclusion, motivation, and engagement by team. So in looking at this slide, how do these photos help you to visualize some of the differences between group versus a team? What are the differences? Well, what defines a team? A team is defined as two or more people interacting with a common goal or mission. While a simple definition, there are different types of teams, work or service teams, project teams, or network teams. Teams are classified by their complexity of task and by the membership configuration. The slide il in, uh, illustrates the complexity as being routine to non-routine. Routine being well-defined, few deviations on how work is to be, be done, outcomes are easily assessed. Um, non-routine are not well-defined, not clear specifications on how to do the work, and outcomes are long-term and difficult to assess. On the next spectrum, there's member configuration, which includes the length of time expected to work together, the stability of the team membership. On that spectrum, we start with static, a static team. And that's a team that is stable and um, a constant team. And on the other side of the spectrum is a dynamic team or a constantly moving and revolving and changing team. The importance of teams in organizations are growing and add to the complexity of the organization's performance management systems. Our textbook talks about the importance of teams. If you think about teams, you have been a part of in the past um, and you've seen teams that have worked well within the organizations, I'm sure you can add to this list. But the list includes increased pressure, including global competition, flexibility in flatter organizations, complexity of products and services, rapidly changing business environments, expanded perspective and broader input. In figure 11.4, types of teams based on member complexity and task complexity, you see the types of teams vary based on those factors. Performance management and teams. Performance management systems should target individual performance, individuals, contribution to team performance and performance of the entire team. 
focus on just one does not allow for the differences and the individuality that each team member brings to come to the forefront. Think about your own experiences with the team and how was the system structured in terms of performance. How did that impact you? Did you feel value? Did you feel the team was fair in their assessment? Some general principles around performance management relating to the team. Uh, just a couple of really big principles is to design and implement the best system possible. And secondly, consider dangers of a poorly in implemented team. And so, or a poorly in implemented system and consider the dangers of that. And we'll explore that a little bit more by managing for improved team performance not limiting the team processes with other tasks and organizational requirements and providing good team design and organizational support and giving feedback only on processes that the team members can control. Giving feedback on things that are outside of an individual's control or outside of the team's control is not effective feedback. Diagram 11.7 here, um, and we'll go through each step um, in, in, some, in the following slides, but before we go over to performance management process, um, I'd like to just highlight uh, the six basic principles for designing a performance management system, and that includes team performance. So make sure that your team is really a team. Make the investment to measure. Define measurement goals clearly and use a multi-method approach to measurement. Focus on process as well as on outcomes and measure long-term changes are just six factors that's included in your book that are the six basic principles for designing performance management system. The performance management system itself is illustrated in this diagram, the process itself, and that process starts with prerequisites. That's the first um, piece of the uh, first step. Knowledge of the mission and that's organization and team, and knowledge of job to be performed by the team, including the knowledge, the skills, abilities, and other that's necessary. That's the prerequisite, understanding the task and contextually understanding the communications, the decision-making, the collaboration, understanding what's expected, what are the, the key objectives and principles. The next up is performance execution. And performance execution is some team responsibilities um, and supervisor responsibilities are um, executed and are carried out. And so for the team um, in that next step, it's about commitment to goal achievement, um, 
seeking feedback from one another and from supervisors. Um, it's communicating openly and regularly. It's conducting regular and realistic peer appraisals. Um, and for the supervisor to execute on the performance management process is to observe and to document, to update team on any changes in the goals or in the organization, uh, if priorities have to be reset or changed, to provide resources and to end reinforcement. Um, step is to actually do a performance assessment and that assessment could start with a self-appraisal. Um, other types of assessment are peer evaluations, supervisor evaluations, and outsider appraisals. And outsider appraisals being someone outside of the organization, outside of the team. Um, so that's an example of um, types of appraisals. Um, and then kinds of performance to be assessed um, when we're talking about a team. Um, there is that individual task performance um, and individual contextual performance that can be evaluated even in a team. There's that individualized piece that is how they do the work and what they accomplish. And then there's the team performance piece um, and how they're working together uh, with synergy within the team. So how do you do this? Well, um, the next step is performance review, and that is the actual performance um, process of uh, sitting down and completing a performance appraisal. Um, and, and the recommendation in the text, and it's generally um, true, but there are variations based on organizations. Um, the performance review process is not something that is um, the same or done in the same way. The best practice approach is how we're kind of looking at this. Uh, but again, there may be a better uh, solution for an organization based on some of the culture things and the desired um, outcomes, there may be some slight variations, but for the most part, the best practice is that um, there's two meetings with supervisor to review, um, and those are team meetings, and there are individual meetings as well. And in a performance review, the emphasis is on past, present, and future. And so, you know, just let me reiterate that um, as we move on into this step, um, that is not set in stone. This is just a common practice in a lot of organizations, but uh, in, again, in organizations, both large and small, they may choose to have a different approach to performance review. Um, if there is a team meeting, the team meeting may be an opportunity to discuss overall performance of the team and overall results, um, but the individual meeting is where um, there would be individual behavior uh, towards the team discussions that would be more the focus. And the information then in the individual meetings may come from various sources. And so again, it may be sources like from their own self-assessment, as well as some peer ratings, um, some project team, and then maybe direct supervisor, because maybe those are two different people. Um, so the, the when you look at individual meetings and the individual performance review step, um, it may look a little bit different than the teams. Last step of the process is performance renewal and recontracting. And that's the last step, and it is around fine-tuning and making adjustments to the plan. Where needed, add or change individual performance goals so that there is consistency and clarity of focus to work to meet the team's goal. It is the place to ensure buy-in and engagement through making a shared vision connection. So this is about 
getting on the same page of understanding. So changing gears a little bit with this last slide, um, now that we've had a chance to look at the process of team man performance management, what about team rewards? What makes team rewards effective, work well to engage and motivate team members? And so some of the key things that I want to close with are some key things that with a performance management system for teams um, that is best practice to include um, to ensure as much as possible. And it's still with anything, there's not 100 um, percent guarantee. But by doing these things and including, including these elements into a performance management um, system, um, then it will work towards engaging the team members. And starting with all employees should be eligible. All employees should be as eligible for rewards. Um, it could be discouraging and the opposite of motivating um, to see pockets within the organization um, receiving rewards without, or individuals within the organization receiving rewards without a clear understanding of a process where there's equity and fairness in rewarding um, staff. And so to be inclusive of all employees um, and, and having that eligibility extend to a certain degree um, is something that's really important. Rewards should be visible, contingent, and reversible. And all of those, again, are things that speak to a culture's value of being inclusive, respectful, being transparent. Um, all of those things are, are just speaks to the culture of the organization. And if there's a desired culture of wanting to be more inclusive and wanting to be have employees feeling more valued and respected, um, that's a that's an important piece to make sure that they're not there's not a group of people left out. You want to avoid factors which cause reward systems to fail. And consider variable pay um, in addition to individual bonuses. Um, so as a lot of organizations have uh, two parts in terms of rewards, they'll have uh, a part that goes across to everyone. Um, it has been called different names, including cost of living adjustments, bonuses, uh, but something that is a shared um, reward for uh, the achievements and the accomplishments or um, just as a, for continual growth and development. There's some shared award, but in addition to that, there is a um, reward that it's tied to performance. And that link then um, allows for there to be opportunity for additional reward. Um, but because the combination of everyone getting something across the board and the opportunity for based on your outcomes and your performance or your behaviors, that there's potentially even more reward available. Um, so those are things, those are um, characteristics or elements of um, how to create uh, a good total or how to in create a performance management system relative to how, how would you reward um, in a way that gives you the outcomes that you want for your system. Um, so that's just the closing for module five.